Well, I, I, Neil, I think this all boils down to, again, it's partisan politics. You know, the group that protested Rice with uh, joining this board of directors at, at Dropbox said it's not partisan, but here are issues. One, she helped start the Iraq war. Two, she helped uh, create Bush's torture program. And three, she served on the board of Chevron. I mean, look, this is, uh, you know, the, the left out to get anyone associated with, with Bush, anyone associated with the Republican Party. It's just, um, it's criminal. Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner sitting in for Steve. A very happy Passover to all of our viewers, as he enjoys it as well with many of you. Condoleezza Rice is right back at the core of another controversy and has nothing to do with being elected. It has to do with becoming a member of the board of directors of a company called Dropbox. Now, if you don't use Dropbox, it is basically a file sharing service. You have it on your computer. You have a large file you want to send to somebody. You upload it to the server. Somebody comes in. They download it. That easy. And in many cases, it's free. So all of a sudden, Condoleezza Rice is on the board, and the furor globally has started over Dropbox doing this. And as you just heard, there are those who feel that it is nothing more than partisan politics. Joining us right now, he is the Distinguished Professor of History at Rutgers University. He also was the lead protester against Ms. Rice, getting honored in a commencement address at Rutgers University. A pleasure to welcome Professor Rudy Bell. Rudy, thanks so much for joining us. You're more than welcome. Let's get right to the, the main point here. Is this nothing more than partisan politics at work? Well, I think it's a lot more than partisan politics. The controversy that surrounds every appointment involving Condoleezza Rice is uh, evidence of that, I think. One could equally argue that the board of directors appointing her in the first place was partisan. Nor is there anything intrinsically wrong with some partisanship. It's certainly not criminal. Well, why is it so wrong that somebody like this, and again, this is just a, a question that everybody is asking. Condoleezza Rice on the board of directors, she really doesn't hold any authority, if you would, at, at Dropbox. So what's the big deal? Well, I assume that a board of directors does have some authority uh, at uh, Dropbox. Some, but like not all authority, answer. simply because they That's have right. to answer to somebody else. Yeah, well, but they can fire, hire and fire the president of the corporation, I would assume. Putting on Condoleezza Rice, for better or worse, is associated with uh, those aspects of the Patriot Act that have to do with uh, invasions of privacy, or what is seen by millions of uh, users of the Internet, is just the exact opposite of what Dropbox is supposed to be about, which is absolute protection of privacy. I think the move is suicidal on their part. Okay, now, uh, suicidal on their point. There really doesn't seem to have been a whole lot. There's a lot of protests at this point, but we haven't seen much of a drop-off in their business thus far. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? So I far, yes. We haven't seen a measurable drop. Now, according to all the reports that I've read thus far, and again, there are many out there, I haven't seen a measurable drop in Dropbox's use at this point. Now, what does that tell you then? Is this still just a minor issue? That's what a lot of people are asking. Uh, I, I think that we will see over the months ahead a considerable uh, drop in the use of Dropbox in favor of alternatives like Google as people figure out how to use these alternative methods. What does this tell us, though, about someone who wants to get into business after their political career and this comes down to what they did? Or let me put it this way supposedly, allegedly, possibly did, because you did hear that there were some people who were saying that she was in charge of the torture program, that she helped to start the war. It's almost as if they're dropping it completely on Condoleezza Rice and saying that this is it, she's it, so we must stop her from getting involved. Well, I don't share that view. She certainly is in a group of advisors uh, and is less extreme than Donald Rumsfeld, for example, but nobody's inviting Donald Rumsfeld to be on uh, the board of Dropbox in order to be a commencement speaker at Rutgers. Uh, she is uh, a person of high visibility, and she does share responsibility with other members of the Bush administration. Her response uh, on Iraq and other things was different, for example, than Colin Powell. So there are, there are shades of, of difference, and I think it's important to recognize those. But where she stands is fairly clear, and Chevron seems more appropriate to me than Dropbox. You had, you had said this recently on one of the shows, and I wanted to ask you about this because I found this comment of yours very interesting. We also think that she played a critical role in perpetrating the misinformation and outright lies concerning weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, which led to a war for no purpose. Let's leave, let's leave the actual end of that. But there is also, we believe, she was deeply co-involved in the authorization of what she called extended, expanded, or enhanced interrogation. Doesn't this again come down to belief with no proof? 
Uh, no, I think that the proof is coming in. More will be open. We're going to have some uh, secret files partially open, perhaps by the Senate in the middle of May. And as a historian, I'm used to uh, the fact that you have to wait sometimes many years for all the documents to emerge. And just as we had the interesting recent book by Robert Gates, which revealed aspects of his relationship during his long service with both a Democrat and a Republican, uh, viewpoints take a while to emerge. And we have not, we don't have a, a closed record on uh, George Bush or Condoleezza Rice. Okay. But I believe her involvement will prove to be greater, not less. But I don't call that a fact. So if we don't, okay, there's there's the point right there that I think I wanted to focus on. It, it comes down to fact versus belief. Seeing as, and as you're right, it may take years, but it also may take years to exonerate somebody, not just uh, basically find someone guilty of anything. So seeing as we have these years to wait, is it fair to attack someone for what may be a belief, but we don't actually know their involvement? I think as citizens uh, of the United States or of the world, we have an obligation to act on the best information that we have at the time being, knowing that the information is not perfect. It has always been the case historically, uh, and I won't go into 20th century horrors like Nazi Germany uh, or the Stalin's urges to take various aspects. People knew. They knew more than, they didn't know with certainty. You can call it believed or the balance of evidence. And I believe that as a citizen, I have an obligation to act on my best judgment at the moment. Do you think, and again, this is what some people will say when they hear about your involvement at Rutgers, that all you're doing, this is not based on anything more than just a distaste. And again, this is not my opinion. I'm saying what I have heard from folks about what you have done and what others have done here in the Dropbox, that it is simply based on a distaste for anything George Bush. And if it says George Bush on it, it immediately has to be damned. It's hard for me to find uh, positive things that George Bush represents that are also represented by values at Rutgers. I've been at Rutgers for 46 years. Rutgers is the place that uh, where the president of Rutgers was uh, arrested for standing up against apartheid in South Africa. Rutgers is the place where President Mason Gross in the late 60s won an award for defending a professor who spoke in favor of Viet Cong victory. Those are the kinds of core values that Rutgers has. Condoleezza Rice does not represent any of these core values. What has been the end result of your initial discussion regarding Ms. Rice and Condoleezza Rice coming to Rutgers University? Bring us a little bit up to date as to where we are here. We are uh, planning, as you and I are speaking, a, a major teach-in for the 6th of May in which we will present our viewpoint in open form where people can raise questions as you're doing with me. I believe in exchange of ideas and that is our main focus. Would you hope though, and I guess this is as a professor of history and also myself just as someone who has covered the history in the media, that if someone's going to have a, a distaste or a dislike or a or not want Condoleezza Rice or anybody involved, that it would be based more on what they have done and not their affiliation with a political party and a president. Again, I have to come back to it because it always seems that if it's George Bush, it's poison to anybody, regardless of what anybody has done in his administration. Condoleezza Rice was the smartest person in the room when she was with uh, Bush and Rumsfeld, by far. And of all the people who should have been giving advice that would have put the country on a proper course, it was she, and she failed to do so. But you would hope that people would judge them on their actions and not necessarily because of their connection with a it's president or administration. She, she tries. George Bush knew nothing about foreign policy. She's the one who would explain to him how she thinks the world functions, and it's certainly not a view that I share. I understand that, and I tell you what, if there's anybody who has put it so eloquently, it certainly is you. Professor Bell, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we will wait and see what happens if Dropbox changes their mind, which, who knows, they may just do in the end. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you very much. Okay. Right. It is always an interesting case to decide how you want someone fired or if you want them involved with your company, how far back they go in their own history. Condoleezza Rice has a lot of controversial items in her history. She has a lot of good in her history, depending, of course, on which side of the political fence you sit on. This is all going to come down in the end to dollars. If Dropbox loses money and they can't sell their service, she won't be on the board of directors for very long. The Steve Malsberg Show with Ed Berliner continues on Newsmax TV.